Okay. Lesson two, deductive reasoning. And then I have blank, blank. I'm going to tell you what goes in the blank right now is the words deductive reasoning. Deductive reasoning, which Jeremiah is also sometimes called logical reasoning, is the logical process of using true statements to arrive at a conclusion that you know is true. Example one says, write a logical conclusion which can be deduced from the following statements. All integers are rational numbers. That's statement number one. Negative five is an integer. That's statement number two. What can you conclude from that logically, reasonably? Sorry? Uh, we're doing A. You're on B. And you're right, but let's get there. A. All integers are rational numbers. Negative 5 is an integer. Conclusion. Boston, you're right. Say it louder. Negative 5 is a rational number. How do I know? Well, all integers are rational numbers, and it says that negative 5 belongs to the integers, which means it automatically belongs to the rational numbers. We call this, you don't need to know this word, but I, I love logic and reasoning, so this is the nerd within me. We call this a syllogism, where you have two statements and you arrive at a third conclusion. Water freezes below 0 degrees Celsius. The temperature is positive 6 degrees Celsius. Conclusion, Jordan. All triathletes have run a marathon. Mr. Duick has never run a marathon. Mr. Duick is over oh hang on no 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 hang on let's get rid of that not a triathlete if I had run a marathon could you assume that I was a triathlete or is it possible that I could have run a marathon and never done a triathlon so this one does not work in reverse. You can't say, oh, uh, he ran a marathon, therefore he is a triathlete. Maybe I can't swim. I signed up. Yeah, let's do this for a second. B, or sorry, D. Now this next one is a very, very famous syllogism, but it's abstract. It says this. If A equals B and B equals C, what else do we know? Taylor, A equals C. Think about that one. Ponder that one for a bit. You see it? If A equals B and B equals C, well, if they both equal B, they both equal each other. In fact, this one is used so often in math, it has a fancy name. We'll write it down because we're nerds. It's called... Transitivity. Transitivity. E. Jordan is taller than Joe. Joe is taller than Boston. Conclusion. Should we model it just to find out? Can you use the names that were given there instead of saying Boston is the smallest? Because I don't know if that's the... I would say that Boston is shorter than...
f. If c times d gave me a positive number, and I know that c was negative, d has to be negative. Um, look up. I'd like to show you shorter ways to write things, so don't write this down. Don't write this down. That's way too much writing. Do you know how we abbreviate is negative, Jeremiah, in math? We go like this, is smaller than zero, which is way shorter to write than is negative. But if it's smaller than zero, doesn't that mean that it has to be negative? Oh, that's actually a logical conclusion. Deductive reasoning there. You can write is negative. I'm going to do that for the rest of the year because I don't feel like writing out lots of stuff. All right. Given the following, now we're going to try and use this deductive reasoning for a multi-step proof. And this is where, Courtney, you want to turn your brain up, turn your brain on. This is where if you get a bit lost, all it means is you're normal. We're going to be looking at proofs. And I got, like, I got to tell you, as someone with a math degree, I found proofs very, very difficult to wrap my brain around. But I want you to commit to at least trying to follow what's going on. It says, given the following, 1 plus 2 plus 3, well, that's 6. 2 plus 3 plus 4 is 9. 3 plus 4 plus 5 is 12. What was the pattern that we noticed if you're adding consecutive integers? What was the sh three consecutive integers? What was the shortcut for getting the answer? Yeah. Okay, so three, 15, three times, uh, 33, 3 times negative 8, negative 24. Is that okay, Jeremiah? Let's make that a negative 24. Sorry? Second one from the bottom? Oh, but are those consent? Ah! Jeremiah, I did a typo when I was typing in a hurry. Thank you, Jeremiah, for catching that candy free, two candies for you, but later on, absolutely. Jeremiah is saying, look, this is actually 11 plus 12 plus 13. If I'd done that on purpose, that would have been phenomenal teaching. Sadly, I didn't. You just caught him a mistake. So you're saying the answer is actually 36, which it is. Nice catch. But our conjecture is... If we add 3 consecutive integers, the sum is 3 times the middle. Prove it. Now, to do a because it's worked for these ones, but remember we saw an example a few minutes ago in last day's homework where that circle pattern worked for the first five, didn't work for the sixth one suddenly. How would I go about proving this? Here is where we're going to do a little bit of algebra. I would let the numbers be. Those. X minus 1, X and X plus 1. Now think, first of all, write that down, and then let's think about this for a while. What's the middle number in this group here, Joe? Just read it to me. X. What's 1 less than X? X minus 1, is that how you would write it? Yeah. What's 1 more than X? In other words, are those three consecutive numbers? They are. I don't know what x is, but I'm telling you, whatever I plug in for x, those are three consecutive integers. Okay? I'm trying to do a general proof that works for any number, so I'll use x's or n's or whatever variable. Usually I use x because we like that. Can you read to me... <coughs> excuse me. Adam, can you read to me... Oh, I'm missing the word add. 
That was dumb. If we add three consecutive, can you read to me that first sentence? If we what? Stop. How would I write these three added together? How would I add these together? What would I write algebraically? Wouldn't I write That's the sum. That's the if we add three consecutive integers. So far, so good. A little weird so far, but... Um, oh, I think I can gather like terms here. For instance, I'm noticing x plus x plus x. What is 1x plus 1x plus 1x? And what is negative 1 plus 1? What? They, they cancel? Why have I, by that statement there, by those two lines, why have I proved our conjecture? What does that last line say? Matt, read me the last line here. No, no, the, the very last line that I wrote here. Read me the last line right here. 3x equals sum. Oh, what was x? Joe, what did you tell me x was? It was the middle number. Yes? So here's what we've said. If we add three consecutive numbers, that's how I would translate that into math. When I gather like terms, it turns out the sum ends up being three times the middle. Uh, not to, yeah, x, but what was x in this case? The middle. Did I just prove this? Yes. I showed algebraically that if you add any three consecutive integers, Shania, any three, when you add them together, it simplifies to three times the middle one. How do I know this is the middle one? Well, it has to be because this one's one less and this one's one more. That must be in the middle. What do three dots mean? You seen that symbol before? What do three dots mean? Boston, gonna open your eyes. Take your jacket off. Seriously. Take your jacket off. That's why you're falling asleep. You've wrapped yourself in a blanket. Okay. I know. I'm not mad at you. If you take your jacket off in about five minutes, your body temperature will go down, your heart rate will go up, and you'll be more awake. Give it time. What do these three dots mean? And you guys have seen this in science yet? Three dots like that means therefore. In conclusion, I'm going to use that because I'm a nerd. Therefore, our conjecture Why is it true, Boston? This conjecture was if we add three consecutive integers. So I algebraically, I wrote the algebraic version of adding any three consecutive integers. And when I simplified it, I got 3x, which was the second half of the statement. The sum is three times the middle number. There's three times the middle number. Turn the page. Or next page. Are we next page over? I think we are, yes? Apparently, I had to tell some of you that. Okay. Here's some notation for you. To symbolize an even number, I will write 2m. Why does that number have to be even no matter what? Is that an even number? 
if I put an even number in there or an odd, you know what? Because two goes into it no matter what, which makes it even. To symbolize an odd number, I'll either go 2n plus 1, or sometimes you'll see the textbook go like this. Jordan, what we're saying is one more than an even number is automatically odd. Or conversely, Devin, we're saying one less than an even number is also automatically odd. Now, does that make sense? If you're an even number and you go up by one, are you automatically an odd number? No, yes, no. Does that follow, okay, Shay? Right? Even plus one is odd. Okay. We're going to use that notation. So if they ever start talking about an even number, just think 2n or 2x or 2y or 2 whatever. 2 times something. If they ever say they start talking about an odd number, think 2 times something plus 1. Or minus 1. I like a plus 1 better because I hate negatives. Conjecture. If I add two odd numbers, the sum, the answer, must always be, is always... Well, if you add two numbers, what can you tell? Two odd numbers. What can you tell me about the answer? Louder, you're right. Even, is that correct? Now, don't write this down. I would probably go, well, let's see. 5 plus 7 is 12. 13 plus 21 is 34. I would try a few odd number examples, and I would see if I could spot the pattern. But I think you just reasoned it out. You said, look, two odd numbers, when I add them together, they have to be even. I agree. Prove it. OK. I'm going to let the numbers be. 2x plus 1 and 2y plus 1. Write that down and we'll talk about why I just did that. So here's the first number. Here's the second number. Why did I just do that? Well, is that an odd number no matter what? Is that an odd number no matter what? And I used an x here and a y here because I want different answers to any two odd numbers. So far, so good. A little weird. You with me, Emma? Have I lost you? You with me? Okay. Taylor, can you read to me the conjecture again? Conjecture. Stop. Say that again. Okay, I'm going to write this algebraically. If I want to add two odd numbers, add means there's going to be a plus sign. Here's my first odd number. Here's my second odd number. There is adding two odd numbers. Somehow, I want to see, Binder, if I can do some arithmetic, some algebra, and end up with an answer that satisfies this conjecture. End up with an answer that I know has to be even, no matter what x or y I put in there. Hmm. Oh, can I uh, gather like terms? Courtney, see the little positive one right there? See the little positive one right there? What's positive 1 plus 1? So here's what I have. What can you tell me about this? Hmm. Hmm. Can this be odd? Why not, Jeremiah? You're right. I agree with you. Uh, you know what? I agree with you. Here's, here's how I would do, I would do one more step. I would factor. Remember factoring from last year? There is a GCF in all three of these terms. What's the greatest common factor in all three of these terms? 
I would write this as 2, and then it's going to be bracket x plus y plus 1. And believe it or not, Sydney, we're done. You may not realize it, but we are. Sydney, at the top of the page, I wrote an even number can be represented by. What did we say that we could represent an even number by at the very, very top of the page there? Louder. Two times something. I, I, I'm going to replace. I, you know what? I'm going to replace. I'm going to replace the letter M with times something. So, what's any even number? Two times something. Look what I have here. Don't I have two times something? You know how I know? Because there's a two in front of everything. Doesn't that mean it has to be even? This is Jeremiah. This is how I would prove what you were saying. Look, I can see it. I don't know how to prove it. I would say, well, if I define every even number as two times something, why don't I try writing what I think is even as two times something? And even though, Sydney, this is an ugly something compared to what I wrote at the top of the page, I'm still going to argue that it matches what we wrote at the top of the page. It's two times something. That has to be even since it's multiplied by 2. That has to be even. These are tough. If you're finding these awkward, if you're finding this weird, you're normal. Don't feel bad, but just don't shut down. Odd plus odd has to be even. Why? Because if I do a generic odd number and another generic odd number and I add them together algebraically, as it turns out when I simplify, I get a 2 in front of everything, which means it's got to be even because 2 goes into everything. Let's try this one. You need your calculators for this. Get your calculators out. If you don't have a calculator, now's the time to fess up because I'm going to make fun of you if you don't have one. Get your calculator. It says choose a number. So all of you write down, right now, pick a number on your calculator. I'm going to pick 17. You all have different numbers on your calculator? It says add 5. So plus 5 and then press equals. Then it says double the result times by 2, press equals. Then it says subtract 4, minus 4, and press equals. Divide by 2. Subtract the number that I started with. I started with 17. I got 3 as an answer. What did you guys get? Huh? What? Oh. How could you do something different? What? Huh? You got three? You got three? Seven? And you followed the instructions and hit equals after each step? And did you get three? Oh, you got three. Oh, I thought you said you, you got something different. You get, sorry? 23? What did you start out with? 20? And you hit equals, enter after each step? Okay. Yes. And, and so that if you don't do that, it's going to do it properly with bed mass. I don't think they want you to do it properly with bed mass. They want you to do it all in this order. Okay. Let's try seven, 20 plus 5, enter, equals. Times 2 equals. Minus 4 equals. Divided by 2 equals. Minus my original number. Yeah, I'm getting 3 back. You have to follow the instructions that are in front of you right on the paper about six inches from your nose there. That, those ones? Prove it! What did you use as your number? Yeah, you. 562. Uh, she's, she's trying to see if she can game the system with a big number. What did you use? 
Okay. Five hundred sixty six. What did you use? Have we proved it for every single number out there? How many numbers are there out there? Think Buzz Lightyear. How many numbers are there out there? Infinity. Can I try them all? No. You know what? Instead, I'm going to try it with num one number. And you know what I'm going to let that number be? What have we done for our generic any number so far? X. Jordan, write this down. I'm going to let the number B X. Can I abbreviate the word number with a number sign? Is that okay? I'm going to. And Sydney, what we're going to do is we're going to walk through this step by step by step, except instead of doing it on our calculator to a number, we're going to do it to the X. So step one says choose a number. I did. Step two says, add five. How would I add five to x? How would I write that algebraically? Five x, is that adding or is that timesing? That's timesing. How would I add five? Even easier. Yeah. Five plus x, or I like x, I like the variable to come first. All right, what's step three? We well, know what does the step say? Step three, step three, step three. Double the result. That would look like this. Two times x plus five. Except I can now front door button, get rid of brackets. Uh, what does that simplify to? Two x plus ten. What's step? Four. Matt, now. Okay, so how would I do that? I would take my number, which is 2 plus 10, and I would subtract 4. When I gather like terms, what does 2x plus 10 minus 4 simplify to? I'll give you a hint. 2x and a positive 6. Okay. What was step 5, Boston? Okay, step five is take this 2x plus 6 and divide it by 2. Now, Boston, what that really means is divide the 2x by 2 and divide the 6 by 2. Yep. What was step six, Boston? I've scrolled down, so I don't... Ah, so I'm at x plus 3, subtract x... What is x plus 3 take away x? What does the answer have to be no matter what infinity of numbers you plug in? 570 works just fine. A trillion works just fine. What's the answer simplified to? 3. There's our proof. I think something like this might be an okay test question in my mind. First of all, because, Courtney, I kind of like these number puzzles where it's like, oh, what's the answer? My birthday! Yay! I think asking you to walk through a proof like that, because it is kind of step-by-step -step algebraic, this I would feel would be okay on a quiz or a test. Prove why the answer is the answer that you got. Is that okay? There are way more famous ones and tougher ones and bizarre ones than just this one. But there's our proof. We're going to finish with example five, I think. And then, ah, uh, no, example six and example five are the same thing. Oh, you know what? We may even finish the whole lesson. Ha. Huh. Won't give you any homework today, though. Example five says, see if you can spot the pattern. I'd like you to try not to use your calculator. Put your calculators down and away. Yes, Boston, you too. It should. You know what? I would argue I don't need to. I trust my algebra. I mean, I've convinced myself. You ready? This will, I mean, this is kind of a series of questions, and if you pay attention, if you spot the pattern, you may actually be able to predict the upcoming questions. So what I'd like you to do first of all is, what's 6 times 6? Write down the answer. And I'm going to freeze the screen. 
And then right across from 6 times 6, what's 5 times 7? And write down the answer right across from it. Yes? What's 9 times 9? And then right across from it, what's 8 times 10? Yeah, keep it to yourself. What's 4 times 4? And then what's 3 times 5? Have you spotted yet how these two, each, each line is similar? If you've spotted it, if I said to you D, 7 times 7, first of all, what's 7 times 7? Can you predict what this question would be over here? Have you spotted the pattern yet? Shay? Except I've gone small number, big number, and what's the answer? Have you noticed any pattern between your answers yet? If you have... Oh, if I told you the second question was 9 times 11 and the answer was 99, what's the first question? Yeah. And what's the answer? So if I tell you this without a calculator, if 50 times 50 is 2,500, what's 49 times 51? Twenty-four ninety-nine. Is it? Hmm. Are we right, Shay? Saw so you reach for your crutch to double check. Yes, you are. Okay. Oh. Proof. Hmm. 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 Sorry? Uh, I want to prove that this pattern always works. You know what I really want to prove? Let the first number be x. So instead of a 6 times 6, x times x. Oh, how would I write x times x? I heard it. x squared. So I'm going to try and line up my columns. This column here is x squared. Where'd the 5 and the 7 come from based on the 6? How did I get the 5 and the 7? Where'd the 8 and the 10 come from based on the 9? How did I get an 8 and a 9? How did I get the 8? Okay, so if I do that with an x, how would I write? Would I write this? Is that 1 minus our generic number? And would I write this? Is that 1 plus our generic number? In other words, if our number is x squared, 1 minus 1 plus, you said, yes? Here's our number, 1 less, 1 more. Foil that out. You've done FOIL. FOIL it out. What do you get? X minus 1 times X plus 1 when you FOIL it out. Remember FOIL? We did this at the beginning of the year review. Boom, boom, boom. I don't want to put the red lines on this one because it's really going to clutter things up. If you FOIL that out, though, what do you get? You don't get x squared. You don't get 2x. Don't you get x squared minus 1 when you FOIL it out?
Look up. Here's the English to this math statement that we've wrote. But I, once you've written that down, look up. Jeremiah, here's what it's saying. If you square a number, one less than the number times one more than the number is one less than the number squared. Is that actually what was happening? Isn't that how we did 49 times 51? We said it's the square minus 1. It's a difference of squares. You called it, I think, last year in grade 10. Okay. How much more am I planning on doing here? Okay, we're going to pause for a second. Right click.